Hey guys, welcome to AI with AI. This time we are going to talk about a really amazing technique in machine learning that is Naive Classifier. It's one of the most popular algorithm in machine learning which falls under supervised learning and as name says, it's a most important classification technique. So in this video, we will understand what is Naive algorithm how machine learning classifies the data by using this naive algorithm so let's see let's get started we are going to see a really amazing example here it's the most popular data set that is used in naive Bayes algorithm this is also available in the scikit-learn library and we are going to predict will Rafael Nadal play next tennis match. So the past data is given here and we need to predict by looking at the past data will Rafael Nadal play next tennis match. Let's understand the data first. So we have a data given for past 14 days and you see some columns here. So by looking at these different day conditions, Rafa will decide whether he wants to play or he don't want to play. Let's have a look at some rows. On day one, outlook was sunny, humidity was high, wind was weak, he didn't play. On day two, outlook was sunny, humidity was high, wind was strong, he didn't play. Similarly, on day three, the outlook was overcast, humidity was high, wind was weak and he played. So we have gathered the data for 14 days here. So now we want to predict by looking at this data, whether Rafa will play tennis on day 15 or no. Given the conditions, outlook is rainy, humidity is high, wind is weak. Will he play? Yes or no? So this is what we want to predict. And to predict this, we are going to use very popular algorithm that is naive classifier. Okay. I want you guys to pause a video here and predict will Rafa play tennis on day 15 or no? Just by looking at the past data. What do you guys think? I think you guys might have guessed it right. On day 4, if you see the conditions were right. On day 4, outlook was rainy, humidity was high, wind was weak, he played. So you may think that, so on day 15, we have the same conditions. So probably he will play the tennis. But this is not how we predict the future just by looking at one row, right? So his behavior may change over the time. As time passes, he may change his decisions, right? And imagine there are millions of rows and hundreds of columns given. How do you predict in such situation? So we definitely need some algorithms to analyze the data and predict the output. So total number of rows are 14. That is 14 training samples are given to us, meaning nine times Rafa played and five times he didn't play given these conditions. All right, so let's see how do we predict this by using naive Bayes classifier. So this is how your naive Bayes theorem looks like. Don't stop this video here. I know by looking at this math, you may get confused. You may get demotivated to learn machine learning, but trust me, you don't have to do any math. You don't have to remember any of the mathematical terms, mathematical conditions here. You don't have to do any calculations. It is just that you have to understand how machine learning calculates the values, what algorithms are used behind the scenes and how machine learning really works, how machine learning predicts the future. Okay, but all these mathematical terms and algorithms are predefined. We just have to import these libraries and use them. Okay, we don't have to do any calculation. This is important to understand from interview perspective. And also, if some type of data is given, which algorithm fits best? Okay, so there are hundreds of classification algorithm. So which algorithm I should use that is really important. So based on the type of data, you will decide whether you you want to use naive base whether you want to use logistic regression whether you want to use decision tree svm etc etc okay so that is why it is important to understand how the algorithm works behind the scenes so let me quickly talk about how this algorithm is defined in book but i don't want to talk about the theory and the bookish definition going forward but quickly we will run through how these terms are defined so p of a given b is defined something like this p stands for probability here probability of a this bar is given b okay probability of a given b how do we define it posterior probability of a given the evidence b this is how it is defined in book 
Similarly, the other terms are defined something like this. This term is defined as likelihood of evidence B if hypothesis A is true multiplied by prior probability divided by prior probability that the evidence itself is true. Oh, 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 don't get confused. Even this is difficult for me to understand and you don't have to really remember all of this. Let me break it into the simple words. So all we are going to calculate is the probability. Let's take one example. What is the probability of playing if outlook is rainy? So given the condition, if outlook is rainy, will Rafa play? Okay, this is what we need to predict. So if I put these terms in the equation, this is how it will look like. Probability of playing given the condition outlook is rainy. Okay, this is what we need to calculate, which is equal to likelihood of condition rainy given he played. What this term says is how many times he played when the outlook was rainy. Likelihood of condition rainy given he played. Okay, so P of yes is total number of times he actually played divided by how many times the outlook was rainy. So to calculate the probability of playing in the rainy season, we need to know all of these terms. So now I hope you feel it a bit easier. Stay tuned. I will make it more easier for you. As you proceed ahead in this video, you'll start feeling it easier and easier. Okay, so what is the probability of no? So this is the probability of playing. What is the probability of not playing? So similarly, we will calculate probability of not playing when the outlook is rainy. Okay, so the equation will look something like this. Probability of not playing given the condition outlook is rainy, which is equal to likelihood of condition rainy given he didn't play. Meaning how many times he didn't play in the past when the outlook was rainy. That is what we can put here. And how many times he didn't really play total number of times he didn't play okay divided by number of times the outlook was rainy okay so we need to calculate probability of yes and probability of no all right similarly we can also calculate the probability for humidity high and when wind is weak currently we are calculating it only for rainy outlook right so if you go back to a table you will understand that so if you see we are calculating it only for rainy outlook similarly we can calculate it for individual inputs okay so all these are your x all these are your inputs so we need to calculate the probability for all the inputs here all right so similarly i can have the equation for humidity high and when wind is weak now we want to put the values in these equation and to make it more simple we are converting it into something called frequency table so let's see how these tables look like so these tables are nothing but frequency tables we created these tables column wise outlook humidity and wind these are the columns and number of times he played tennis yes or no so if you look at this this is very easy to understand when outlook was sunny he played three times when outlook was sunny he didn't play two times when outlook was overcast he always played zero is for no when outlook was rainy he played two times and he didn't play three times right it's very easy to understand by looking at this frequency table so same goes for humidity and wind if you look at this when humidity was high he played three times when humidity was normal he played four times right when wind was weak he played three times two times he didn't play when wind was small he played four times zero times he didn't play easy to understand right now i'm gonna convert this frequency table into probability table let's see how it looks like if you see here this is our frequency table and this is our probability table you don't need to worry about frequency table and probability table this is just for our understanding and we took an example only for outlook when outlook was sunny he played three times when outlook was sunny he didn't play two times how do we convert it into the probability table if you see here we are dividing these values by total number of times he played right so 3 divided by 9 so 9 is what total number of times he played irrespective of whatever the outlook is similarly overcast 4 divided by 9 rainy 2 divided by 9 if you look at this column again how many times he didn't play is total 3 plus 2 is 5 he didn't play 5 times he played 9 times okay that's why we are dividing every number by 5 here he didn't play 5 times right 2 divided by 5 0 by 5 3 by 5 okay and what are these values 9 divided by 14 is total number of times he played divided by all data sets so if you remember we have 14 data points i mean 14 rows right nine times he played out of 14 five times he didn't play out of 14 okay that is what we are putting here and what we have here out of 14 days how many times there was a sunny outlook right outlook sunny three and two three plus two is five so five divided by 14 same for overcast 
it's 4 divided by 14 and same for rainy it's 5 divided by 14 3 plus 2 is 5 divided by 14 meaning simply we are putting 5 times there was a sunny day 4 times there was overcast 5 times there was rainy out of 14 days okay 9 times he played out of 14 days 5 times he didn't play out of 14 days simple to understand isn't it and similarly we have created probability tables for humidity and wind as simple as that coming back to our original question will rafa play if outlook is rainy now we can put these values in the equation let's have a look at equation once again so that you remember it okay this is the original equation p of a given b is equal to likelihood of b given a probability of a divided by probability of b simple which is nothing but this so we are calculating probability of playing when outlook is rainy okay so we need to put these values now so now do you think that we have these values how many times he played when outlook was rainy right how many total number of times he played divided by how many times outlook was rainy so let's see these three values if you look at this this is total number of times he played irrespective of any outlook right so that is p of yes total number of times he played is 9 divided by 14 is total number of days so it is 9 by 14 similarly if you look at this this is how many times outlook was rainy out of 14 days right so that is 5 by 14 and finally if you look at this this value is nothing but how many times he played when the outlook was rainy right i can also define this as conditional probability or likelihood of rain given he played okay that value is 2 by 9 okay so let's put these values in the equation and we will able to calculate it and we will able to get the value only for if outlook is rainy so don't you think we need to calculate the same thing for not playing when outlook was rainy so same way we can calculate probability of not playing when outlook is rainy this time it is not playing okay so not playing how many times he didn't play is 5 by 14 right probability of saying no is 5 times out of 14 days right total number of no's and 5 days were rainy out of 14 days right p of rain is 5 by 14 same way how many times he didn't play when there was a rain right so that is three times he didn't play out of five days this term is nothing but likelihood of b given a don't get confused between likelihood and probability these terms are used interchangeably you can say likelihood or probability likelihood is just a conditional probability okay because we have some condition here right so probability is a simple probability where likelihood is a conditional probability calculating because we are calculating a probability given on some condition right so that's why this is called as likelihood oh so now if we put all these values in the given naive base equation this was the equation that we have seen before so probability of playing in the rainy outlook is 0.40 that is 40 percent similarly i can calculate probability of not playing here is the same equation only we are calculating probability of not playing when outlook is rainy right so if you put all the values the probability is 0.60 that is 60 percent chances he will not play if outlook is rainy but we calculated it only for outlook rainy so don't you think we will have to calculate it for all the inputs right we considered only one input so this is where likelihood of saying yes comes into picture and how do we calculate it something like this so i'm going back to original question will rafa play considering all the columns we calculated only one column similarly we can do it for all the columns probability of playing when outlook is rainy multiplied by probability of playing when humidity is normal multiplied by probability of playing when wind is strong multiplied by total number of times he played it's called likelihood of yes that is likelihood of playing so likelihood of saying yes can be calculated by multiplying all these values so i want you to calculate and put the answer in the comments below same way please calculate the value for not playing similarly we can calculate the value for not playing that is likelihood of saying no so you may comment down your answers below and this is how we are calculating likelihood of playing and likelihood of not playing this is still a likelihood that is conditional probability right we want to find the probability of playing or not playing how do we calculate the final probability which is equal to likelihood of yes divided by likelihood of yes plus likelihood of no so this will give us the final probability of playing and same goes for not playing right likelihood of no divided by likelihood of no plus likelihood of yes so this will give me a final probability of playing and not playing so i want you guys to calculate the final p of yes and p of no 
and put that in the comment. So I have already created a probability tables for you. You can refer these tables by pausing the video, calculate the values and put them in the comment. Because if you calculate the values, you will never forget naive base classifier. And frankly speaking, you don't really need to remember all of this. It is just a game of probability. It is just a mathematical magic that is happening behind this classifier. Okay, and this is how machine learning is actually predicting the future values, predicting the future output. So is this the only thing that I need to learn? How do I use this classifier in machine learning? So in machine learning, we have three types of Bayes classifiers. These are named as Gaussian naive Bayes, multinomial naive Bayes and Bernoulli's naive Bayes. Okay, so these three classifiers are designed to work better in given a particular type of data set. Okay, so for specific data set, Gaussian may work better and, and for some other specific data set, multinomial may work better and for different type of data set, Bernoulli's may work better. What type of data set and what type of new base classifier we should use, that is the different discussion. We will see that in the next video. And I think I tried to define new base classifier in the simple terms. And that brings our discussion to the end of this video. I hope you are loving the way we are trying to explain the things and make machine learning easier for you. If you really like learning from me, make sure to like and subscribe because that's what motivates me to create more videos. All right, so that's it for this video. See you in the next video. Thank you. Bye-bye.